Hello, we're looking at how to examine profile logs taken from a stream-based server session. Collect and examine profile logs when the server has higher than expected memory use, higher latencies, or side effects of delays like unresponsiveness, disconnections, or failures. Make charts from stream-based profile logs to assist finding the sources of performance issues. Charts often show when a problem started, long before an error was reported. This is a simple version of many stream-based applications. It takes several inputs, some of which are processed in a parallel region. A parallel region is part of the flow running in its own thread, able to use a CPU separately from the rest of the application. In this case, some inputs cause a delay of the top-level thread, preventing any input for a brief time. I have a stream-based server instance running this application. Here's the command to generate the profile log. Note the port number is 10,000 for the server and provided to the sp-profile command. There are several ways to collect profile logs described in the product documentation. It is a good practice to always collect profile logs in your production and test environments so you have the performance data when an unexpected problem occurs. Start sp-profile shortly after Streambase or Live Data Mart reports it is ready and let it run until a problem is observed or the server is shut down. I won't run the SP profile now since I've already collected profile data from startup to a failure. Let's take a look at the raw SP profile output. By default, a profile log shows stream based server activity every second for all active operators, queues, threads, and streams. This includes server memory use and Java garbage collector activity. In the log, for each second, there are interlaced, comma separated values records for each of these record types. We will separate these records from each other for charting. To get the record headers from the profile, use the find string command. The slash r option identifies the search text as a regular expression. Header lines begin with a hash or pound sign. You can use the same expression with the Linux grep command. If there is significant queuing, that results in higher message latency through the server and higher memory use. A well-running server has infrequent and short-term queuing and processes nearly all messages without any delay. A server can continue running with significant amounts of queuing. The platform assumes that whatever is causing processing delays is temporary, and the server will have resources soon to reduce the backlog. Let's keep these headers handy for later. The queue record type begins with a queue character. Let's separate out that record type. All parallel sequence queues represent the queues around concurrent regions, which are parts of the application which are configured to run in their own thread. The name parallel sequence describes the function of stream-based queues. They support parallel operations and maintain tuple order. Look at the end of the queues.csv file, the third column, which is max length, to find the queues that at some point during the session had high values. These are the queues to examine. We will note their names and extract these specifically. In this case, the default process parallel sequence queue, the queue of an operator named process, had high queuing. The default parallel sequence queue is the main queue for all the server inputs. If this had been high, then we would know that the main processing thread was frequently blocked on some activity. Since this is low, we know the top-level application process tuples without trouble. Queuing preserves unprocessed tuples in JVM heap memory, and if heap starts to become exhausted, the JVM will start to do extra garbage collection cycles. These pauses take away from useful processing time and can cause further backup of input data. Since the queued tuples are not garbage, they cannot be cleaned up by the garbage collector, so this is wasted effort by the JVM. Separate out the process operator queue into its own file. Open the process queue file with Excel and chart the fourth column, current length, as a line chart. I am inserting a row for the headers and copying the headers from my notes before. I will then chart the current length column as a line chart. This tells me the approximate row numbers where queuing started. There are interesting points where significant queuing starts, like row 229, 
742, and 1255. I can use these row numbers to find the timestamps for comparison with the console and other logs. Maybe there was an error message at or shortly before those times. From this log, I see that under normal load, the application was keeping up, but there were short periods where load was higher. For these early periods, the application caught up. Then at a later time, the load stayed too high for too long, and the application was not able to catch up. Let's take a look at the memory use by charting the system records that begin with the character S. Chart max memory and use memory together. Here we see that the garbage collector kept memory use under control during most of the session, but accumulated queuing ultimately filled working heap memory. This usually results in a long hang and crash. We've already identified the process operator as one that is experiencing backlog. Let's look at the operator statistics for the process operator. We'll graph how busy it is by graphing the microseconds in operator column. This operator frequently requires as much CPU as it can get for several seconds at a time. A comfortable load is when a busy operator takes under half of a second of CPU time each second. More than that, and it will likely be frequently competing with other operators in the same thread. The competition is what kept the process operator from taking 1 million microseconds each second. This operator is CPU starved and cannot consume messages any faster. In the same chart, let's look at the throughput supported by this operator. This operator can handle on average about 800 tuples per second. Higher rates cause tuples to queue. We saw that backlog occurred frequently, so this application needs frequent pauses in order to catch up. We are now very confident we understand that this failure was caused by nearly continuous overloading of the process operator, which in this case cannot handle over 800 messages per second. The resultant queuing used up all working memory, leading to the crash. The problem is not that there was too little heap memory. In this case, any amount of heap would eventually be exhausted. The problem is that the data rate is frequently too high for too long for an operator in this application. One solution is to split the work this one operator does across two or more operator instances, each in their own concurrent region or thread so that each copy of the operator is able to use a full CPU independently of the others. Other solutions, like reducing the input rate or finding a more efficient algorithm, may also be available. Thank you for watching this video. Please leave any suggestions or comments here, or visit our community site. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.